Okay, so um, we're going to start today continuing on with chapter 10 and we're now going into the section on metals and non-metals. Um, okay, so I just snipped this out of the book just to show you. Um, in most periodic tables you'll have this kind of, it looks like a set of stairs over here and that essentially splits up your metals and your non-metals. Okay, so you can see from this part here on the left hand side of the stairs you have your metals and on the right hand side of your stairs you have the non-metals. There are a few that are literally like right on these stairs like silicon and germanium. There's a few of them there that sort of have, um, they'd be called semi-metals. They sort of have like crossover properties so they'd have some properties of non-metals and some properties of metals. Um, but at this point we don't need to worry about them. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention is hydrogen it never really has a place. It sort of sits here on top of group one, um, but hydrogen is a non-metal. Okay, so basically all these in blue here are metals and all of these in kind of yellow, orange are non-metals. Okay, um, now this is going to need to go into your copies. Okay, so the main thing you'll be asked about metals or non-metals are properties. See this here? properties okay so properties are kind of like um how do you describe properties like a, it's a physical thing that kind of uh, describes that atom so like say if you were talking about the properties of miss Connolly, i would say that i am um not very tall i am a teacher um you know, I would just if I were to describe myself, they would be my properties. It's the same with these atoms. Um, if they were to describe themselves, that would be their properties. Okay, that's the easiest way to describe a property. And for the most part, metals have very similar properties, and non-metals have very similar properties. And um, there are exceptions which we'll talk about, but there's not many. Okay, so the properties of metals, if we read down here, so they are shiny. And generally speaking, most of the metals that you see would be shiny. And even when we were doing that experiment the other day, and do you remember when your man cut through um, the alkali metals? And when he cut them before they started to react, they were shiny. So um, generally speaking, metals are shiny. Their melting point is quite high. So most metals would be solid at room temperature. And if you want them to melt, you'd have to heat them really, really, really high to really high temperatures. Um, so yeah, most of them would require quite a lot of heat to melt. Um, their density, uh, so density, um, a metal feels heavy for its size. So if you were to take like a small cube of say lead or something and take the same size cube of like polystyrene, the lead would feel much heavier compared to the polystyrene. That's because polystyrene is largely made up of air holes. Um, so that's what density means. It means it's well packed. It means all of its atoms are very, very tightly packed together. So for its size, it's very heavy. And um, generally speaking, metals are strong. Uh, now here's a couple of words you won't have heard of before: malleable. And um, so metals are malleable, which means they can be hammered into various shapes without cracking. So they can be manipulated. And um, if you use a hammer, they, it will kind of bend and distort but won't shatter and um, so that's what malleable is can be hammered into various shapes ductile means that it can be like stretched out and turned into a wire so a lot of like the wires that we have in the lab um, they'd all be made of copper so copper is a ductile metal because it can be stretched out and turned into a wire and um, generally speaking metals are good conductors of heat and good conductors of electricity so conduct means um, to allow it to flow okay so if you are a good conductor of heat it means heat would flow through something quite easily um, I don't know if anybody has fires at home anymore but I remember my nanny used to have a fire and she used a poker to kind of move the coals around and stuff and if you left the poker sticking in the fire and then tried to grab the other end of it, it would get hot because the poker was conducting the heat from the bit of it that was stuck in the fire to the bit of it that you were then grabbing like an idiot. Um, 
So yeah, most metals would conduct heat quite well. It would happen with a spoon as well. If you leave a spoon sitting in the top of the spoon, it can get quite hot. Um, and then good conductors of electricity, so they also allow electricity to flow through them. Um, generally speaking, the properties of non-metals are the opposite of metals. So if you were doing an exam and you were going to learn these off, you know, it's just the opposite. So if, um, starting at the top, if metals have a shiny appearance, non-metals are dull. If metals have a high melting point, non-metals have a low melting point. Most non-metals are liquids or gases. Uh, they're not solid. And the fact that they're liquids or gases means they have already melted. So if they're liquids and gases, when we meet them, in most rooms, and most rooms would be like, I don't know, what, 18, 19 degrees, that would be room temperature. So if these are already liquids or gases at room temperature, it means their melting points are really, really low. Uh, density, so again, um, high density for metals, they will feel heavy for their size. These will feel quite, with the opposite, the density would be low, um, and non-metal would feel quite light for its size. Um, metals would be strong, so non-metals would be weak. We said metals are malleable, which means they can be hammered into shape, so then the opposite, non-metals. So any of the non-metals that are solid, likewise for density, there's not many of them that are solid at room temperature, but any of them that are solid at room temperature would be very brittle. So brittle means that they break easily. Um, ductile means, remember that they metals can be drawn out into a wire, so the non-metals are non-ductile, they can't be drawn out into a wire. Um, Metals are good conductors of heat, so these would be poor conductors of heat. And same here, good conductors of electricity, so poor conductors of electricity. Okay, so this little table needs to go into your copies, but from a point of view of if I was studying this for a test, like your once you learn your metals, you know your non-metals because they're just the opposite. Okay? So um, there's an experiment that we're supposed to do for these two to show that metals are good conductors of heat and to show that metals are good conductors of electricity. Um, so there's a couple of setups for this um, and the one we have is circular. So I'm going to show you a video now and it's more similar to that. So what we have in the lab is like a circular piece of wood like that. And then there's a piece of metal going out this way. I don't know, I can't, like, let's say that's the iron. Then there's a piece of metal going out this way. That's made of copper. A piece of metal going out this way is made of zinc. And a piece of metal going out this way is made of aluminium. And then what we do is uh, heat up a little bit of, like, candle wax so that it's, like, liquid, kind of that gooey texture. And we take a thumbtack and stick. So use the wax to stick a thumbtack on here same here, same over here, and same over here. And then directly under here, we put a Bunsen burner. Okay, so the Bunsen's right in the center, should be the same distance from all of the four, and it starts to heat up. Okay, so I'll show you the thing now, but basically they're all metals, all four are metals. So they conduct um, heat, um, and we will be able to see that because the heat, so from here, it will heat up the metal, it will travel down the metal, down the metal, down the metal. When it gets to here, it will melt the now solid wax. So we melted the wax, we stuck the thumbtack on and we let it dry. So it's it's not melted anymore. But when the heat arrives, it will melt it again and the thumbtack will fall off. Now that process will happen for all four, proving that all four do conduct heat. But what you will notice is that they don't all conduct it the same. Some are better conductors of heat than others. So some will move more quickly and the thumbtacks will fall off a bit quicker um, than in other situations. Okay, so your homework tonight is going to be to write this experiment up. You can write it up using this diagram, like a circular version of this. Um, like... The method is here so that shouldn't be an issue I'm going to show you the video so again it will be like you did it and um, in terms of a results table you're literally just gonna have your little results table and um, I suppose I don't know um, I don't know what they're using in the video but let's say iron is one of them and you'd be able to pause the video and say that iron took 20 seconds to drop you know brass took 
however many seconds to drop um, zinc wh whatever so you'll have to use the metals that are in the video because they're the ones that you have results for and then pause the video and you'll be able to figure out how many seconds it took for them to drop and as a result you'll know which one is um, the conductor so we'll watch this quickly and then I'll just talk about it um, actually I think I have it here sorry yeah here it is Okay, so the Bunsen burner is there in the center. There's copper gone, aluminium gone. There's brass gone. We're weights, so we're waiting on between stainless steel and steel. There's steel. Okay, we didn't quite see stainless steel go. Um, Okay, so very simple little experiment. Um, so you need four or five metal rods with different metals. You can take the metals off the video. Bunsen burner, grease or wax, you could see the wax on those as they were falling off. And um, so like if I was in the lab, I'd just use candle wax, melt it, use it, stick it on and then let it dry. Um, the tripod, generally you hold the ring up on a tripod and yeah, pins or thumbtacks or something like that. And um, so set up the apparatus as shown. Like I said, you can use a more circular model because that's what we would have done. Heat the four rods over the Bunsen burner flame and note what happens to each pin. So you'll be noting that here. And um, so, you know, copper fell at however many seconds. Um, I've forgotten now what was next. Aluminium fell at however many seconds and so on. Um, so it says here, when writing up the results, place the metals in decreasing order of conductivity. So I don't care if they're in order, you'll, I'll know which one is the best because I'll have the times. Um, so yeah, I suppose what this experiment proves is one of the properties of metal, like most of these, like the fact that it's shiny, you can see that. The fact that it's heavy, you can see that. I mean, to prove that something has a high melting point, I suppose if you took like a piece of metal and held it in a flame, you know, you wouldn't, if we held a, I don't know, a, a nail or something in a flame for most of a science class, we wouldn't get it to melt. It would just wouldn't be hot enough. And um, so I suppose we could do an experiment on that. Um, density, it's heavy. You know, if I gave you a, if I gave you a piece of, like I said, a piece of metal and a piece of polystyrene and asked you to hold them and they were the same size, you would note that the metal was heavier. Um, strong hand it to someone and try and break it and um, malleable and ductile I mean yeah I suppose I get you to like so most of these are kind of common sense these are the only two we do an experiment on okay so um, yeah so essentially what I want you to do is put this table into your copies please and um, and watch that again very little to watch and please put this experiment into your portfolios for Thursday. All right, thank you.